right, hello, good morning, um, good afternoon now. Uh, I am so excited to speak with you today and to bring these four amazing panelists here uh, to talk to you on our town hall about remote tools for learning and working. Uh, my name is Jessica Abel Wilkinson. I am the project coordinator for University Technology Solutions Strategic Services and Communications. And I have uh, these four lovely people that I'd like to introduce to you right now. I have Kendra Ketchum, who is our Vice President for Information Management and Technology. I have Janelle Bramlage, our Senior Associate Vice President for Information Management and Strategic Services. We have Melissa Vito, our Vice Provost for Academic Innovation, and Marcella Ramirez, our Executive Director of Digital Learning. And uh, thank you all so much for taking the time uh, to be here and to really be visible and give our community a chance to reach you and kind of get some insight into the things that you are doing to make this transition smooth. So what I'm going to ask you to do, uh, each of you is to introduce yourselves and make uh, an opening remark, something that you're thinking you want to bring to this town hall. And I'm going to go ahead and start with you, Kendra. What can, what can you say this sure. afternoon? Thank you, Jessica, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon for this town hall so we can share some great information on tech tips and tools to help you be successful in both telecommuting and in your academic endeavors. Um, I am the Vice President for Information Management Technology, and we have really been working very digital, diligently and hand in hand with the, the academic division to ensure that we support the academic enterprise. The mission that we have at hand right now is ensuring that our students, faculty, and staff have the tech tools in their hands that they can use those tools to conduct their classroom activities and the business of educating uh, the students, right? So those are the things that we're trying to ensure that, uh, that we're doing. And I'm very excited to be on the panel today and take questions from, uh, from the internet and groups out there. And as you can all see, we're all in our home offices uh, self-isolating right now and ensuring that we can be the ones to help not spread uh, COVID in San Antonio. Great, thanks Kendra. I'm gonna move to you, Janelle if you could introduce yourself and say a little bit. I will, thanks Jessica. I'm Janelle Bramlage, and as Jessica mentioned, I'm a Senior Associate Vice President for Information Management and Strategic Services. And I'm here today because a lot of my area has been overseeing some of the training that some of you may have taken part of. Uh, we're offering a lot of different training sessions, so I'm here to answer questions you may have about training that's available, or even Kendra and I have talked a lot about different tech tips and different things that, that may help you. We work closely with academics, Melissa and Marcella on here. We, we have a standing meeting actually every morning uh, where we're collaborating. So it's kind of exciting to be here with them in tandem and handle some of these questions. Awesome, thank you, Janelle. I'm gonna move over to you, Marcella, if you could introduce yourself. Um, hi everyone, my name is Marcella and uh, I'm the executive director of Digital Learning. So my team uh, has been working with faculty to move their courses online and provide the tools and resources that they may need to do this successfully and help them adapt to this new environment. So we, we've all been working together very closely um, and, and listen to student feedback as well to try to improve this, uh, this quick uh, transition to online. Um, I'm happy to be here and answer any questions related to Blackboard um, any, uh, and any other of our digital learning tools that are available for our faculty and students to support uh, teaching online. Great, thank you so much. I'm gonna move finally to Melissa. I can't wait to hear your introduction and what you have to say. You are muted though. Mute. So. Okay, I'm Melissa Vito. I'm Vice Provost for Academic Innovation. And I oversee um, an area that includes Marcella's team. It also includes Shelly Howell, who leads our teaching and learning. So we've got both the tools and working with faculty and with the pedagogy that goes along with how you build courses, learning technologies. Also part of the area, Ernest Fernandez, who leads our um, our video area and making sure that we're here today. We have a team and I will say that as we started to anticipate things coming, we kind of set some priorities and some big picture goals for us. And one was that we would we want to maintain the quality that is distinctive about UTSA online and everything we're doing. And so while uh, we did things fast and worked a lot, depended a lot on our faculty, there was a method to how we would go forward. 
and developing peers to support peers. So quality was important. We look at both the faculty experience and the student experience. And so while our priority is to make sure that faculty understand the tools, that they're able to integrate pedagogy and be able to, in a quick way, pivot to delivering things online, we also want the experience for them to be as positive as possible. And some of that's tool dependent, and some of it, as Kendra said, and Janelle, is, develop, is tip dependent on how you use the tools. And then finally, and equally important, is what is the student experience at a time like this? And so we know that for many of our students who've taken online courses, but not necessarily mid-semester, right after spring break, suddenly never to be, come back to campus and in your home offices doing everything fully online and sometimes with faculty who are also just learning. And so we are trying to keep track of how students are experiencing online. We're surveying in different ways through student workers and working with other students on campus so that that can help inform what we're doing. So I'll shut up now, but that's my story. Thank you. Great. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I'm excited to hear more about some of the things Thanks. that you mentioned. Um, since this is a town hall for remote tools and learning um, and for learning and working, we are inviting questions from all of our viewers. Uh, and as those come up, I'll be filtering them to the appropriate person to see what they have to add. But as we are just now getting started, uh, let me turn to you, Janelle, and have you talk about how our training is going. Because as Melissa mentioned, um, these schools are really yeah. important and how we use them matters a great deal. Yeah. So we have really ramped up training. We were offering some training in person on campus prior to going remote. And then when we realized everyone had to pivot and go remote very quickly, and we had some tools they may not be familiar with, um, we started adding training sessions. So Jessica, who's moderating this, is one of our trainers. And we have a few other people, some that have been training and some that have stepped up to volunteer to train on some of the software that's available. So we're running training weekly and there's a website off of the coronavirus page, the www.utsa.edu forward slash coronavirus. There's some training off of there for WebEx meetings, for Jabber, for Microsoft Teams. We have some Q&A sessions and we'll be adding other training as other software is added to the mix. So uh, we're, we're right now we're running our training based on need. So as we see numbers start to decrease in some or increase in others, we will adjust the training sessions as needed. Um, but we, we feel that we're still providing a pretty viable service right now and people are still logging in to do these trainings. So we know there's still a need. Absolutely, thank you, Janelle. Um, as somebody who has been doing this training, I'm excited to share that it's been a very positive experience. I've gotten a lot of um, really helpful questions and feedback, and I really feel like everybody who's coming to the training is getting what they're looking for out of it. So from that front, I'm pleased to report that I think things are going pretty well. Um, sort of on top of those things, one of the things we're doing in training, right, is using these tools, uh, sort of meta showing you how to use them as we use them. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to sort of touch on today is going to be tips for how to hold meetings, how to use these tools effectively, um, so that they don't freak up, so that their performance is optimal. Uh, Kendra, could you speak to some tips for how to hold a good online meeting? Sure. Um, I can start by saying uh, minimize the bandwidth. We don't need to see everything in your house in 4K. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that everyone's got such great resolution on our cameras, but right now the internet is crying out for help because Everyone is streaming, and I'm certain that uh, 80 to 90 percent of the workforce that is now working remotely um, is consuming those resources. So I started telling folks today we actually learned another good tool, a, a tip. Um, start your meetings 15 minutes after the hour. Don't set them right on the right. hour. Um, I, I noticed today I started doing that in a couple of my my meetings, and it actually the performance was better. And I feel that probably like we've all seen is a lot of meetings start right at one, right at two, right at three. So position those meetings to start a little bit later, give yourself a little bit more time, and then narrow those meetings down to like 30 minutes and make yeah. them really actionable. Make it a decision-based meeting so that you're not tying up the bandwidth with um, things that you could probably handle via a call. Uh, I mentioned that because we do a lot of things uh, now where we're talking, um, even in our executive meetings, we started removing video. If video is not needed, go ahead and just pull back the video and, and 
that way you don't have to get out of your pajamas and share with you know anyone else <laughs> that you're not that you're dressed right because most of us got up today and and we all want to get ready like we're going to work <laughs> because we're all uh seeking for those relationships so uh one of the things that i'll tell you too is that um Start looking online for some of these outages. Start using your tools while you're online. We've got a plethora of resources at the Tech Cafe website and on the Tech Resources tab of the coronavirus page. That that particular um, page can give you anything from uh, Microsoft's uh, hours that they're seeing peak times during the day. Uh, we, we're seeing those times usually from 10 a.m. Uh, till about 4 p.m. The same thing goes with uh, with uh, Blackboard. Some of these providers actually publish those times. And then lastly is just keep your meetings short and sweet. Just be execute, use this time to kind of thoughtfully, strategically plan um, and then operationalize it after you get off of your meeting call. Those are just some things on, because I, I, I wanted to mention, that's just on the work from home side. While we've been doing training on the telecommuting side, I can promise you there has been more training going on on the academic side. And Melissa, I can just share with you, it's a testament to what y'all's team has done and offered for all of the faculty. Um, I answered a survey today and something like almost 90% of our faculty have been trained. That is amazing. Is. So I'll jump in. You might have some tools or tips that you might have just from an academic learning profile perspective. Please. Um, Melissa, if you want to add to that. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought we were going to. Okay. Um, you know, I would say actually you hit on most of the key points. There are a couple things that, that I would offer. Um, and one is general and one is more specific to some of the work we've been doing with faculty and training. And then I'm going to turn over to Marcella. <clears throat> but I've amused, I have a lot of colleagues. Um, I've been working partly remote um, for my whole time at UTSA, actually. So I've been on campus a few weeks a month, and then I've been um, back in, I'm in Arizona right now, the rest of the time. And so I'm kind of used to the pacing of, you know, get up, take a few meetings in your bedroom, maybe before you're even out of bed, you know, find time to have a quick shower or do something, zoom back in for everything else. But I'm watching the social media of my colleagues and friends who aren't used to working remotely. And I would say, give yourself a break. It's hard, but if you're not used to it, it's actually the pacing of it in many ways. If you're back-to-back -back meetings is worse than being in the office because you can't get up and go talk to somebody. You aren't moving around and, um, and people end up exhausted. So I would just ask, you know, and I think Kendra's point, I always like, if I have an hour meeting, I always take it down to 45 minutes and take things down to a half hour. And I think just look for ways to shorten those types of meetings too. That was a really good piece. On the faculty end, um, we actually started doing training quite a while ago. I mean, it I mean, it really was a few weeks ago, but it seems like a few years ago. Our um, approach was a couple fold, just so you understand. One was to use Blackboard to deliver and to operate in because we wanted our faculty and our students to be comfortable with that LMS tool because that's what everybody was gonna have to rely on. Um, we had an approach to try to develop sort of peer networks. And so Marcella can talk more about the details because her instructional designers really led the way along with a faculty champion identified in each of the academic departments and then a, a, a point person for each college. And that became kind of the triad that helped lead a lot of the training. And we did training over the weekends, as I know Kendra and Janelle have done. We started um, immediately helping do Blackboard Essentials training. And we had several hundred faculty take part in that. Did a full week of training, picked up actually a thousand faculty through that, continued through the weekend. And now we're trying to develop training that is developmental. So as the term goes forward, what kinds of things are faculty dealing with that we can address proactively through training, whether it's grading, student engagement, other kinds of things. So Marcella, you wanna jump in with more details or does that sound okay? Do I need to go back to you, Jessica? Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, I think that Melissa pretty much covered our, our strategies for the trainings. Um, the weekend trainings worked out really well um, because, I mean, faculty had a little bit more time to reflect on 
from what they were listening through the entire week and apply it and then ask questions during Q and A sessions those those weekends. Um, so that was very valuable for our faculty and it also gave them uh, the opportunity to be a student uh, in an online environment, which really helped out a lot to, to identify some of the gap areas that they, they might be having while transitioning online, so providing more details in their instructions, um, and ba basically sending reminders. You know, we have this meeting, um, download the tool if you don't have it, uh, installing your computer so that they can plan in advance. So that was really helpful as well to, to bring in that experience uh, for faculty to, to be empathetic of what students might be feeling through this transition. Absolutely. And, you know, this isn't um, sort of scripted or rehearsed at all, but I'm on the faculty of the writing program and I can right. attest that that training was really successful mm -hmm. um, and that I felt not only that, but the representation that I'm getting from my a uh, point person is really good also. Awesome. So uh, I can report from the ground on that. Um, and also as sort of informal tech support for the writing program, I'm finding that they're they're on their way. They're doing pretty well. Um, I do have a question. Oh, sorry, Janelle, go ahead. No, I was just gonna jump in and just say too, you know, one of the things we've cautioned people about too is you have to plan for the um, unpredictability of our internet service providers. Mm -hmm. So and, and, you know, as much as we would love to have these meetings and use the technology in, in right. both training and in working, um, sometimes it, the training fails or the technology fails us a little bit because so we have to be a little flexible in how we're handling things and realizing that uh, we have to caution people sometimes if you're having trouble with a tool you're using, it may not be the tool. It could mm -hmm. be your Internet mm -hmm. connection, although at a meeting this morning and talking to my group, most of us have found that our internet connections are wireless are actually stronger in our homes now than what they were before. I don't know yep. about everyone out yep. there listening, but a lot of people are saying the same thing. It's like these internet service providers actually realized that, that what was going to happen and, yeah. and have increased things. But I just wanted to mention that, that look to that sometimes your internal connection rather than the tool. Great, thanks, Janelle. Um, I do have a question from one of our viewers that it seems like either Melissa or Marcella could take. Um, and this seems like a student who's reporting. Um, one of my teachers is using Blackboard to record audio to go with his PowerPoint lecture. This is a great effort and appreciated. Uh, can you speak to will this be a standardized effort for delivery of instruction? Hey, Marcella, you wanna, you wanna jump on that one? Sure, um, Jessica, I didn't hear the last part. Could you repeat yeah. that, please? Sure. Um, the student is saying they have a professor who's recording audio to go with their PowerPoint lecture. Is this going to be a standardized effort for delivery of instruction? So um, that's a that's a great strategy to have um, to delivering content and the lessons, but it's not just the only one. Mm -hmm. All of the all of the approaches that it's um, for teaching online, it depends on the teaching style as well exactly. of the faculty member and the materials that they need to cover. So even, even this is working for this particular student because of the type of material that they're covering, sometimes, you know, with, with STEM courses, it takes a little bit more than that. So having live sessions with, um, you know, some uh, practice uh, materials so that students can actually jump in live and ask questions helps out. So we cannot set a standard of how to move to online of just using PowerPoint and narrated uh, audio. And there's different ways to deliver content and uh, we're showing all of them and then fa guiding faculty in which one could be the best one for their material and for the type of students that, uh, that might need more, more help. So it depends, but it's a great strategy. So I just want to throw in there to add to that, because Marcella, that's great. Um, I, I want to give a technical, more postured answer around the technology, and especially right now, given that you know 80 to 90 percent of the workforce is working remotely. Um, a lot of this, the voice recordings and things like that, that you can do asynchronously, we recommend you do that. Um, and the reason being is that you know when it comes to the pedagogy side, how you apply that to actually learning and to the lesson material is different than how you would consume it. Um, and so from a consumption perspective, I'm excited to say that, look, use your bandwidth, 
wisely, right? Use it to do the things you need to. So take off online video synchronization, things like that. And so to, to speed up things at home, that could be one is, uh, is actually remove audio or actually record it and then offer it up for the students to download later so they could do that asynchronously and not use and consume all of their network bandwidth as well. Just some more ideas or tips, if you will. Great. Uh, and then, you know, as, as faculty do that, remind them not to upload it during peak hours or to have students not download it during that time either because it's not, it's not going to go as well. Um, I have another question from uh, one of our viewers. Um, again, this may be a Marcella question. Um, what kind of feedback have faculty been receiving from students regarding their online instruction? Do you have any insight into that? And I can maybe speak to it too. Sure. Um, so we've been getting some feedback from um, from students. Uh, typically, it's you know about having uh, to understand a little bit more about the tools that they're using. So some of the students are not familiar with using Blackboard Collaborate or um, using um, a specific assignment tool. So um, we're sharing those resources for students to to practice and download those those files. Um, other type of feedback that we gotten was, um, you know, using email for the an announcement tool as well. Exactly. So if they're posting announcements, um, to also send it as an email so that students can get that information mm -hmm. and not have to log in constantly to Blackboard uh, to check announcements. So they get that immediate uh, communication from faculty. Um, other things. I know. I Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just actually looking at the survey results. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just to make um, so that's one of the other things. Uh, so basically, there's been some some technical glitches because a lot of the tools were new. Um, so it, we're just recommending faculty to to allow some flexibility for students to adapt to to that learning curve of of using these new tools. And you know, if if a student doesn't have a camera or doesn't have a microphone, what are some workarounds around that to be able to participate in the online class? So those are the things that we're looking at and, and helping um, case by case. And I know that uh, Kendra and Janelle has also helped out with some of the equipment uh, resources um, uh, for online classes. But I don't know, uh, Melissa, if you want to add anything else from this? You review? know, I think that I, I was just looking because we are surveying and then mm -hmm. kind of trying to collapse the data. I think the other thing is sort of a big picture thing for students. They um, are trying to manage expectations the faculty have and faculty are trying to figure out what are realistic expectations. And so, you know, I think trying to synchronize those. And so students sometimes feel, are feeling like faculty are expecting too much. We are hearing on the other end, faculty are trying to figure out how much they should expect, you know, and how do you do that? And I think their uh, students are starting to worry about grading, what's going to be the impact of all this on my grades. Um, and so I think I think the level of just sort of anxiety and impatience to find clarity also is a little bit of sort of the backdrop of how our, our students are experiencing this. Shelley Hal did a, a nice blog piece on sort of empathy, um, which is is I think you know really important in life, but especially right now in this time that we kind of give each other benefit of the doubt and try to put ourselves in the place of, of, of others. And I think for the first time, our faculty aren't necessarily the total experts. They may be in their field, but not necessarily in how they're delivering what they're doing. So that's all that I would add. Right. That's actually, a, that's a great point, um, especially, you know, Melissa around the yeah. empathy piece, because oftentimes design thinking and actually solving a problem, you have to have empathy uh, to, to get there. And so just seeing, you know, even right now, that impatience, um, hopefully what we're starting to see is more grace in that, in, in that space, exactly. especially because this is, this is not just happening here, right? It's yeah. not just happening in San Antonio. It's not just happening for UTSA. Yeah. This is global. And yeah. so, and it's very unprecedented. And I can tell you that every single panelist sitting here has never had this happen mm -hmm. in their entire professional careers. So all of us are going through navigational waters right now with this, this compass, right, mm -hmm. that, that we're lending our leadership mm -hmm. uh, to, to really guide us through. 
So, so that's where I feel very confident. Our leadership really has been preparing for this for, for a while. And I think now that we know from that global size of things that it's important to, to share and to just share a little grace right now to, as we go through it. And just, if you see somebody that's down, check in on them, check in on your other students, check in on your classmates, um, you know, because we're all sitting in our home offices and, and that that's all over. And so that's one of the things I would mention is just look out for for each other as you're going through this, because it's very unchartered. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for both of those things. Uh, I can say from sort of the front lines of this, there are a lot of students who are reacting with grace, uh, who can see that their faculty are now students. Um, and I've received a lot of, of students who said, I feel so bad for y'all. This was not what you planned. I don't know how you're doing it. Um, and so, you know, it is encouraging a little bit to see some of the grace from that side. Uh, we have another question um, from another viewer. Um, they would like to know, they're, they're, this is their wording. With the semester quickly wrapping up, will faculty be expected to include online methodologies like recording audio in their instruction? I feel like only a few are making an effort to teach online. So can uh, Melissa or Marcella, can you sort of talk about not just that, um, how are faculty expected to transition to online teaching, but also how, we're, how are we going to find out what happened afterward, if you could? Yeah, so um, just I can, I can add a little bit to that. Sorry. You know, we've been doing this for a while, not at this scale, but we have been working on um, building online courses for our online programs. And we do have a lot of quality um, assurance checks and uh, that we incorporated in this. So we have a continuous cycle of reviewing and that's our plan as we move forward with the next semester is to actually review what worked, what didn't work, how we can um, keep it simple, but at the same time, try to fix those important elements to enhance uh, um, student engagement and having some, uh, some of the um, um, accessibility components, make sure that all of them are included in there and so on. So we're, we're taking, um, we're creating a checklist to make sure that all those components are in there and that we can just uh, have faculty run through it and analyze our course and see, well, maybe we need to, in, there's an area of improvement here and we need to create a webinar to help those faculty members close that gap. So that's kind of like what we're thinking about uh, moving forward. And Jessica, the um, two things that I might just add, one thing about UTSA, um, just for people who don't know a whole lot about online education as a profession, a lot of schools outsource it and they use a online program management company, you know, a Pearson or others. And so they kind of do all of this. They work with the faculty and they put it out. And, um, and there's some benefits to that, but I would say um, we chose not to do it that way, which is how a lot of schools are moving now, because we felt like we had better opportunity to personalize the strengths that each of our faculty have and make sure that pedagogy re um, really connects to each of our faculty and not in a template way. And, we, and, and I think that we're seeing that now and we also use a national quality rubric called Quality Matters. And so one of the things that, um, that it does is it allows you to measure what you've built across a nationally benchmark tool around quality indicators for online education. And so everything that we're building, I know that part of the checklist that Marcel is working on, ultimately we are gonna look at that roadmap and make sure that we've hit those quality quality metrics in addition to the individual um, qualities that our faculty bring to what we're doing. So anyways, just a little background. Thank you, thanks for that. Um, we have another question and it's kind of ironic because it's actually one I can answer. Um, we have somebody asking, has Adobe Spark slash Adobe Page and video uh, been suggested to faculty and students? Uh, and that's one of the things that I sort of have been touching on. I have done some Adobe Spark training for the writing program guest taught in a few classes this teacher. And if you, you know, are listening now and you haven't used Adobe Spark, it is awesome. It not only has a web interface, but also you can use it on your phone. 
um, even if you're just looking to spruce up your Instagram, it has some incredible capabilities. But for teaching, that was the first tool that I turned to uh, to make some nice videos for my students to say, this is what's coming up. Um, and there, you don't have any complexity. I want to I want to say Adobe Spark is like a tricycle in that it's super easy to use, very intuitive. And if you put it on your smartphone, you don't need any equipment, right? Everything is built in. Um, so definitely, uh, I'm an advocate for Adobe Spark for faculty and students. And we do have uh, Red Madden and our Adobe ambassadors who are spreading the word yeah. about that as well. Um, another question we're having Actually, is- Actually, hey, huh. you know what? While we have an open spot, can I jump yeah. in for a second? Please. Because Please. Um, I always look for points of pride and we actually, UTSA became an Adobe Creative Campus. And there are about 23 of those campuses across the country. We're the first large public um, campus in Texas to do that. And what it means for you as students, faculty, and staff is that you have access to the full Adobe Creative Cloud suite. And so it is Spark. It's also things like Rush. You can do awesome videos off your phone. I mean, there's an amazing an amazing array of tools that, you know, we um, signed on in the fall and Red Madden, again, as we've mentioned, is leading a group of students, our Adobe ambassadors, who are helping to sort of spread the word. But I'm not, um, not sure that it's been a top priority in working with all our faculty right now, in large part because they're super overwhelmed. But it's an important piece of how you enliven the curriculum how you keep students engaged. And I will put in a plug that um, we will be participating in an Adobe Creative Jam. Um, April 15th, I believe is the date. There'll be a lot more out, but we're looking for ways to keep our students engaged, even though you're all virtual. And this will be a virtual Creative Jam. There'll be students from different creative campuses, and that means students from Berkeley, students from Arizona, students from Utah, students from Clemson, there's a broad array and they'll all participate in this uh, creative jam. There's a whole set of cool prizes that Adobe throws into the pot that you can compete for. And um, just because you brought it up, even though it wasn't exactly on task, I wanted to put in a plug, watch for this, because again, we are trying to find ways that we keep our students engaged, knowing that you're not physically on campus. And this is a really cool way. So you, anyways, I was going to do that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going to talk about Adobe Creative Jam. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm also for mm -hmm. some reason on the committee that's helping to organize that. Exactly. Anyway. Because you're good. And, we and have, <laughs> I, I'm everywhere. I don't know yeah. why. Um, but we have uh, a team. It's going to be smart cities. Very, yeah. very cool. And um, I'm, I'm plugging this too because it's something to do right now, right? It's mm -hmm. virtual and you can still get, I know a lot of my students are looking for a way to still grow, right? As students and um, work together and have camaraderie somehow. This is a very cool opportunity to do that and very on point. Um, one of the larger themes that I think we're drawing out here is that as faculty take online teaching sort of in hand, as students um, move to remote learning more, uh, they're all sort of emulating the modern yes. workforce, uh, especially considering how things might might change now that so many of people, so many people across the country are working from home. I think there are definitely some silver linings here in terms of mm -hmm. how our students and our community is reflecting the modern workplace. You know, that's that's interesting. One of the things I thought I would mention just from the the from a business and telecommuting and workforce mm -hmm. development side of the house, um, they're learning that classroom to career stuff, right? This is yeah. the stuff that you, exactly. you cannot uh, get get training for, yeah. right? Um, and so just being able to, to pivot and be nimble, it's a testament to the, to the faculty, it's a testament to our leadership, yeah. as well as our students. And, yeah. and so I think um, one of the things I, I keep mentioning to folks is that get small meetings together. Uh, we created, weekly uh, happy hour online. You get together, everyone just says, hey, how are you? These are mm -hmm. my dogs, these are my kids, right. these are, you know. Here's this, my glass of wine. <laughs> yes, this is my new normal right now. And yeah. so and I encourage those. And then the other thing we did is on Fridays, we started adding a, a mini town hall style to our, to our group meetings so that the teams could get together. Because mm -hmm. again, we're disparate, we're all separated around, but yet we're trying to maintain that cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. And I really look at it like the metabolism of what we're trying to do and that we're the connective tissue to this. And so I think it's important from a leadership perspective to really put us together that way. So just my, my two cents. 
I, I appreciate that, Kendra. And since uh, since you were speaking, let me capitalize on that and ask you, um, could you speak a little bit to what we at UTS are doing now to get technology in the hands of students who need it? I know that the Tech Cafe was pushing some things forward and I thought maybe you could sure. share what we're up to. So this is a great opportunity right now to help others. The digital divide in San Antonio is real. It's real across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an opportunity to see how can we help students that particularly might not have laptops. They might not have internet connectivity at home. Um, there are things and services in place to help students that, that need it. And so what we needed to do was very quickly pivot. We've worked very closely with the academics, uh, mm -hmm. Dean Hendricks from the libraries, mm -hmm. Tammy Wyatt from the academic division. And we found laptops across the organization that weren't being used. Yeah. Um, they decided at this point we needed to re-image those. And so the University Technology Solutions re-imaged those laptops. And then Saturday and Sunday, uh, the team were on campus at the Tech Cafe and they distributed these laptops to students. Roughly about 75 students came in on both days and picked up laptops that we basically checked out to them for the rest of the semester. Um, this to me is, is, that's the power of community. It's the power of UTSA. It speaks to us ensuring our students have mm -hmm. tools to be successful both in and out of the classroom. Um, and I think it also taught our students some things too, right? Um, to see our students stand up and share and see that others perhaps didn't have what they had to be able to be successful. I think it was an eye-opening opportunity for us to really be empathetic and say, we've got more to do here to help. And so put on our orange and blue, let's go row runners. And so that's what they did. The Tech Cafe showed up and they delivered. So thanks to all of those academic yeah. units, we were able to serve yeah. those students very well. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really uh, getting some good feedback on that from, from my students as well, seeing that we're able to step in uh, in that way. Um, I have a really great quote from one of our viewers um, that they've shared. It's kind of alliterative and nice. And it says, relationships before rigor, grace before grades, mm -hmm. patience before programs, and love before lessons. Uh, and I think that really speaks to the core sort of theme of empathy that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, Kendra, you're a pithy quote person. Mm -hmm. I know uh, yeah, that, one, that's great. that one might be one that you like. I'll save it for you and send it, yeah. send it to you later. Um, we have just a couple more questions here. One, um, maybe Melissa, you could speak to this. Uh, some of our viewers are interested in what kind of training and assistance you can get for Adobe Creative Cloud right now. Um, actually, we've just hired somebody full time who's working as a part of Marcella's team, who um, thank God he came when he did because Although Adobe hasn't been his prime focus, he's super talented and creative and has been really, really helpful in helping with all of our instructional design needs. But I think as um, we are starting to pause, we actually will have full-time full -time support who will be working to do workshops, to get out to student organizations. We actually were already talking about how we can get into um, orientation be ready with some opening of school things and get some additional training going for faculty. And so, Marcella, do you want to talk any more about Willie? I don't want to speak for you or for him, but I'm super, he's, 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 a, he's a great hire. And uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so I can just add a little bit. Um, he has, uh, he stepped in and helped us create a lot of video resources that we needed to create on the go of mm -hmm. you know how to set up your class in blackboard collaborate how the students use it and he used uh adobe yeah. to create those presentations yeah. so you can actually see the power of mm -hmm. adobe tools mm -hmm. in his videos um and how easy he was able to put them together right. so he's using those as cases for when we start training and we start picking up mm -hmm. uh, training for 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 faculty, staff, and students, and he will be leading that effort. Yeah. But um, he he saw the opportunity of yeah. showcasing those uh, elements awesome. as well as part of this transition. So uh, we have this question sort of being reiterated. Um, it would be great to have training, right, for Adobe Creative Cloud software, um, like for WebEx, Jabber, and Teams that uh, UTS is providing, um, along with accompanying guides. Uh, so this is something to sort of take in hand. I've heard, you know, even before this transition that Adobe Creative Cloud um, training is really needed. And it's, uh, I can speak to trying to use it myself. It's very complex, right? So there, you know, some tools are very simple like Adobe Spark and others. 
uh, have a lot. But if you haven't, I would say, if you haven't actually opened um, the Creative Cloud, downloaded the programs and checked them out, um, you should, because as you open them, things like Photoshop, InDesign, they have built-in tutorials. Um, and some of them have really robust training within the program itself, where you can click a tutorial and it will give you all the files and show you exactly how to do the thing that you're trying to do. So rather than wait, although I hope we are going to provide training, yeah. definitely I would encourage everyone to open those programs, take a look, follow the tutorials within them, and you'll find there's a lot that you can do um, on your own. So uh, that's a re really good point, Jessica. And I also wanted to um, comment that as we opened the semester, UTS, along with others, did a full, um, a full day or day and a half of training on Adobe Tools. It filled up immediately. We did the same thing last spring, filled up immediately. And so that is where more of the focus is going to be. It's, uh, we just really have been in a, um, a, a kind of trying to keep our head above water. For a little bit, but we have we now have the the team member who can lead the way with that. And um, if students have any questions, you know, they they I'm pretty easy to find. So is Marcella. You know, let us know because we don't want anybody out there who's really trying to figure something out. And we can you know maybe have Willie start using a bit of his time to start to develop some tools. And also we could probably bring some of our Adobe colleagues. The campus. They aren't allowed to use public transportation right now during this time and can't fly or travel. But we have uh, a couple people who are in Texas, and I, I imagine that um, they would come over and help do some training if we're not available right now. So we may even want to think about that. Great. And I'll definitely follow up because I, yeah. I definitely want to know these things and to share that with, uh, with my colleagues. Yeah. Um, Let's get a little bit more on the technology itself side. Uh, Virtually. If you are uh, a student who has a computer, but you don't have reliable internet, uh, Kendra, what, what might you suggest that those students do? Well, right now there, uh, there is a link out on our site with, with the COVID-19 uh, website, basically that uh, shows the tech resources. And I, there's a section in there about internet service providers and some of the free resources that they're currently providing to students um, that perhaps might not have an internet connection and faculty too. Um, so uh, there's those. I, another thing I just found out last week was that if you walk into any Sprint or AT&T or even call Sprint or AT&T with an already smart phone, uh, that has the capability to turn into a, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot, they would actually set that uh, service up for you on your phone for free. And you would get that service for a couple of months. I want to say two months for AT&T, maybe three months for Sprint and Verizon. So there are services there. And then lastly, um, you know, I don't want to encourage people to get outside, but, you know, some people have uh, wireless. There are still some locations in the city park areas where people can sit down in their cars and get wireless. Unfortunately, we're not having to do that. Folks are, you know, being able to connect right now. Um, but I, I would, I think the best way would be to do that asynchronous and use your phone as a, as a hotspot. Um, take advantage of those opportunities right now with those carriers and those service providers, because, you know, they, they're obviously uh, trying to provide a service to, to folks who's never had it. Great. Thank you, Kendra. Um, as you have shared this awesome information, we have a bunch of questions coming in. Uh, let's do a little bit of some brainstorming ones here regarding the tools that we're offering for collaboration for faculty staff. Um, we have a question, which tool do you think works better for small discussions and brainstorming, uh, WebEx or Teams? Uh, Kendra, I might put that back to you, see what you think. I'm very tool agnostic, so I'm probably the worst person to ask that question to. I'll tell you, it depends on the pedagogy, the application, how they're actually using it in the classroom, and and what their actual intent with that tool is. Um, I'm not going to recommend uh, many tools. I'm not going to say use Teams over this or you know that. Uh, I would also start to think about um, what am I trying to get out of it. If I want more asynchronous tools, then I might use something like uh, you know and record it using Zoom and then play it back later. Um, I've seen Teams work out really nicely as far as the amount of people in a meeting, and I've seen Zoom work out really nicely. Um, we've had some challenges, but we've just recently added WebEx to our portfolio of services as well. So again, I don't want to I don't want to get tooling and and get prescriptive there. I'm typically very agnostic in that space, but I will say we we are capable of supporting all of those tools. 
Great, thank you so much. Um, this has accidentally turned into way too much of me, but I happen to be the person who's doing the team's training right now. Uh, so I can speak uh, philosophically in terms of what Teams offers versus WebEx. And I will say that one of the main selling points, one of the main philosophies of Teams is persistence. Um, everything that you do on Teams lives there forever in your SharePoint, online, in a giant history. So if you would like to constantly return, right, what did we brainstorm last week? I, I think Teams is really good. Um, WebEx and Teams have a lot of similar functionality, so ultimately it will come down to what you're most comfortable with. We all have ways of record keeping, um, but if you need something that is very persistent, I'm going to throw, throw my hat in for Teams there a little bit. Yeah. One of the things I might mention, because this is very relevant and will be to our student body population right now, currently the students are actually consuming an email address from the Google Cloud, okay? They're not in the Microsoft Office 365 Cloud. That is very relevant because our faculty and staff are. So we had already planned over the, the course of the next six months to take the student body's population and move them into the O365 cloud, thus giving them the Microsoft uh, email, Microsoft uh, exchange tools, all of the online remote tools, uh, and, and being able to get Word, Excel, and so forth. But that also allows the collaboration using Teams in there, right? So, so to my, in my perspective, I agree. Teams is a great tool. Um, I think it'd be even better once we get our student body moved into the O365 cloud. Now you've got a seamless, truly integrated platform for students to thrive and collectively collaborate with their faculty counterparts. So that's just, just my two cents. Thank you. Uh, we have another couple of questions. Um, what would be the best way, looking forward? Um, to give our panel, these, these groups, um, feedback and suggestions for how online instruction is going. Uh, we have a, a real want and need uh, from our audience to contribute uh, positive engagement at this time. So what do you, uh, any of you, what do you recommend for how to follow up with us? Um, that is that is great. Um, I'm glad to hear that, that they want to share all of this uh, feedback with us. Um, I, okay. I think that the best way right now is, I mean, there's some colleges doing surveys um, to all of their students, and that's one way that we're collecting all this information. But also, I mean, they can also send us an email to academicinnovation at utsa.edu. And we can get that feedback as well and share share how their experience is going. Um, so feel free to send us an email. Perfect, thank you. Um, we also have a couple of questions. Uh, this one is one that we've been talking about a great deal. Um, do we have, or are we planning to get an institutional license for Zoom or Adobe Sign? Kendra, can you speak to that? Sure, myself and Melissa, and here's the great news. Yes, this is something we've all been talking about. Um, there, back to when I said I'm tool agnostic, I genuinely meant that, right? We, I am not going to prescriptively tell people what tools to use. What I want to do is, is get them to the why. Why do we need to use these tools? And so I see a fundamental need for tools like Zoom, WebEx, Teams, um, all of these ways for us to create mechanisms to create adoption on these online platforms. Um, so it goes back to supporting that. So yes, if we can get a, a enterprise license for, for Zoom, I would say let's go for it, working together collaboratively with Melissa and her teams to roll that out. Um, and, and sure, looking across the, why would we not want to put um, administrative uh, work into the enterprise basket such as uh, Adobe? Right. Adobe is a great suite of products. Um, I, I keep seeing this, we'll grab some, we'll light some up, and then we don't really consume it for the value that it offers. And I think Adobe would be one where we could do that as well in the Adobe Sign product line. The workflow behind it is extremely rich and um, extremely uh, customized. My apologies, because my dog's barking in the background. So this is one of those things that's unscripted when you're working from home, right? Uh, and I have four, so, but um, but yeah, it, uh, it, it just, like I said, it's gonna be, you know, one of those collaborative things across, you know, I wanna ensure that when we govern our portfolios that we're doing it, not necessarily thinking of, oh my gosh, we can't use all these tools, but rather let's use the tools to the fullest effort that we can to create the most value back to the organization. And so that's where I feel like we, we, can, we have work to do and I'm excited. And Jessica, I just wanted to offer one thing. We, um, it's, it's interesting because we raised the issue about Zoom earlier this week. 
Kendra, Janelle, her team, super responsive um, because we had had felt like it was actually a more um, it was it was a tool that seemed to be working better for people. So we are hoping we want to get through some processes on um, you know some purchasing processes and other types of things. But we we academic innovation will be able to underwrite this, and we are really hoping that with um, UTS support and a little grace and goodwill, hopefully by mid-April, we will be able to turn that on for all faculty, students, and staff on campus to have a Zoom license. So stay tuned, but it is a coming attraction. Now, the ultimate irony is that I'm a Zoom lover, and I got kicked off of Zoom just now. First time ever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we know nothing is perfect. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because actually just today we started getting some, a, a lot of things. There's this new thing called Zoom bombing. I don't know if right. you guys have started watching this yes. today. Um, it's happened across the state. It's happened in Texas. It's happened in California. And so as you start to see some of these behaviors happen, the hackers are still there, folks. They're just going to find new ways to try to disrupt business, yeah. to try to get their, their methods and their mindset, get it notarized and all of that, right? So what I'm telling people is still don't open it up for full access, right? Use your common sense. Don't just go in and set up a classroom and let anyone take over and command and control. Um, so thankfully, I'll let you know that UTSA has worked very hard in the background to ensure that we're protecting that Zoom environment. It's Melissa Vito's team, Joe Tavares, and those guys have been phenomenal in getting that from a security and cyber posture footprint really, really uh, good and secure. So it's been good. Thanks. Melissa, you look thoughtful. I do. It's because yes. my dogs just went out <laughs> and I'm <laughs> hoping that my workman doesn't come <laughs> during this time. No, I was just thinking, you know, it's, it's a moment for us and it's how do we not lose sight of our big priorities? Like you, you were conversation around Adobe, you know, that um, may have, we may have lost a couple of weeks on training and how do we keep that going? How do we ensure that student engagement is strong yet different? Um, you know, that has meaning. And that's why understanding what's working and what's not is really important. And I think, to Kendra's point, I'm a big believer in grace, uh, along with empathy, and how do we continue to manage that. And then I would say, how do we not burn out all of our teams? Um, you know, I look at the work that, um, you know, Marcella's team is doing, which is literally 24-7, you know, around the clock. And, um, and it's a lot, you know, same thing for you know, really, I don't have a corner on that market. A lot of people, because I think we're in this for a while. And so how do we pace ourselves while not losing sight of what we have to get going? So I think that's what I was thinking of. But I think I decided, Kendra, that since my team meeting is Friday at the end of the day, it's going to be a virtual happy hour. Spread the word. I like that. I we called it a, a beverage of choice meeting, but yes. I think it's a great. All of us get to. We have a BOC because IT likes to. We have a lot of acronyms in IT, so we have a <laughs> BOC meeting. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Very very nice. Um, this is one of the things I, I'll, I'll sort of bring us to a little bit of a close here um, as these last questions come in. Um, one of the things that I love about being in academia, and this is what I'm seeing in the chat now, uh, we have viewers who are thinking about how we're going to learn from this experience in the social sciences. So this is the question that we have uh, put forth. Are we collecting these initiatives and ideas on the pivots, actions, and logics that we're taking right now to manage the shift uh, to contribute to UTSA research in the social sciences? Uh, how are we collecting and are we going to be able to mine this data uh, as, an, as a, an academy? Let me unmute. That's a great question, and I want to share with you. Yes, this is exciting time. Uh, Dr. Amy, in his in his bold research, and and uh, Kimberly in her research background, that is exactly what we want to do. And uh, not necessarily say that we want to come out of the gate with the best of what we were able to do, but necessarily what we learned as we did it. And some of the things that we've started to put together even now, as far as a knowledge base, is being helpful to the rest of the city. Um, I've even handed out stuff to our CIOs in the space in, in the state of Texas, things that we've done that they've able you know, to actually take in and, and consume as well. So yeah, I think from that perspective, yes, we are. Um, I hope that we do collect it and learn. The other thing I'll mention is U University Technology Solutions provided some 
some robust computing architecture to the research division on campus, um, even to respond to the COVID-19 response factor as far as creating an algorithm to understand how and how quickly the spread ratio was happening. So even you know while we're doing all of this response rate to celebrate working from home, we're still celebrating the and supporting the academic mission. That's the biggest piece, and it's going to stay. And so we've got to learn as we go and do this. So Melissa, do you have anything you might? Yeah, want to I, I just want to jump in because it just complements what you said, which is super, um, which is exactly true. Um, I think the other piece of what we're doing, because I take a lot of pride in the work that. Um, Janelle and Kendra and your team and Marcella's team and the rest of us all did to be able to rally quickly and come out with such high faculty engagement. And um, I know from my communications with colleagues um, at other schools outside of Texas, in Texas, around the country, we, we set a pretty fast pace in a comprehensive way. And so I think the other thing is that um, I used to chair campus emergency response at University of Arizona. I did that for over 10 years. And so you're always trying to prepare for something. And so it is, how can we inform a national conversation around what worked and what didn't work? You know, our students live in a broad environment. And so they may leave Texas. They may still, they may be in, we have students in high school or grade school that'll be coming to us in a few years. And so how are we thinking about how are we prepared for them and how do we support others um, doing this? I did a webinar last week um, with a group of colleagues out of a student affairs piece that was about sort of how are we supporting our students out of the classroom needs in a virtual environment. And it's, an, it's a rich area for opportunity and, and, and research. And, you know, there's a lot going on and then there are some real gaps and and um, some questions. Uh, Marcel and I are looking at doing a um, kind of a salon or online learning consortium later in April, um, just to help get some organized conversation around, now that we've got all this, are we changing the learning environment for everyone over time? Or is this a big speed bump and everybody goes back to the way they were? Or what, what, what reverberates through how we teach and learn over the next two, three, five years? And I think those are the questions that, um, that, that, Jessica, that I am thoughtful about and that we're trying to look for ways that we can inform and learn from. So I'll shut up now. No, I, I think you're right. And I'm, I'm very eager um, to see this. I, this is my, I finished my first year at UTSA this year. And so I'm very eager watching the institution grow and change. And there is a silver lining in that I can see what kind of transformation this is going to make. Um, so this, we have our last minute here. Let me um, turn the conversation to Kendra one more time and ask her, um, how do you see the future of UTSA and University Technology Solutions changing as a result of what has happened here? What have you learned? What are you uh, going to do to move us forward? Wow, that's a little that's bit a, of a hard one, I know. That's a hot pie in the sky question, but I can tell you what I've learned so far. And, you know, Jessica, none of this was scripted and we have a, an incredibly resilient group of people. That's what I can tell you. Um, to see everyone collectively come together, like Melissa said, we coupled arms, we knew what we had to get done and we knew what time we had to get it done by. And none of us were doing it for ourselves. Okay, and so going through that collectively together, it was a shared experience. And I will definitely, I even learned something about myself because as we go through, we, we start to learn that being vulnerable with one another typically is frowned upon, but I wanna be able to say, hey, I'm a, little, I'm a little scared too. You know, what does this mean for us? And being able to do that collectively with our, our peers in a way where we're not seeing each other every day and still lifting each other up. I think that's incredibly important and it's incredibly inspirational. There's not a lot of environments that I've worked in that have that kind of ecosystem to ensure that we're all taken care of and that we're all doing well. So it's a testament to our leadership. I will say that um, the pace of which we've been sprinting, um, it, it demonstrated that we were sprinting in the right direction. We were nimble. And that's the other thing I think it showed us is that we're pretty nimble and pretty quick. So if we have to pivot again, we can. Um, we should never be so solidified in a business process that we don't want to learn how to, to actually create an efficiency because then we stop thinking about efficiencies if we get there. So that's my two cents. Melissa, I'm sure you've got a lot more to add there. No, actually, I, it was perfect. I, I was nodding because I'm high-fiving you virtually. Ah. 
Yeah, Tucson. thank you. But it's been great. I can tell you our leadership across campus um, has been incredibly uplifting, incredibly supportive. Um, the things that we've been able to accomplish in the short amount of time, just as a testament to no one saying roadblock, roadblock, roadblock. It's always been, give me that third idea. And then that third idea could be something that could help us get through. So again, time of sharing, a time of, of being patient with one another, um, extending grace, and then just learning as we go through this together. And um, you know, eventually someday, you know, let's let's talk about how uh, we inspired others to be great during this, right? That would be, that's the conversation is what did we inspire someone to do as we went through this and showed how grace, grace was done. So. And actually, I think that's where a lot of the stories will be. I mean, I used to say in my old roles, when I chaired emergency response, there's always an opportunity in a crisis. I mean, yes. that's that moment to be able to dust off that idea pivot quickly, do something. And the beauty of UTSA, and honestly, it's unique, is that decisions were made so quickly. Um, I know, Kendra, you've been at other institutions. I've been at other institutions. You know, I've been in, you know, very significant roles and never have I seen um, belief in the power of, of all of us as leaders yeah. to be able to have an idea, move quickly and get it done. And, and that's just, yeah. That's it's a testament me. to that trust, right, at the leadership oh. level. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So high fives all the way around. Virtual high, high fives. fives to everybody. <laughs> all around. Yeah. Uh, I can I can uh, testify to that too, as I'm still connected to my uh, graduate institution, and I also taught at another institution in San Antonio this year. So I've got three different email listservs coming through uh, where I can compare and contrast responses, and, and I'm not afraid to say UTSA is really doing an amazing job. Um, so on that note, let me uh, thank all of you for your time and for your expertise today. Thank you. Uh, you guys are a real testament uh, to sort of what can be achieved. And uh, I want to emphasize, especially if you're a student or a person early in your career and you're watching, uh, this is what female leadership looks like. And it matters a great deal. So um, we're very think lucky. I that. <laughs> we're, we're very lucky, right? Uh, and, and I just want to express kinda my did. I was yeah. looking at us and um, yeah. Awesome. Big yeah. thumbs up. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank y'all very much. This yeah. Great. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate Bye. your time today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hey.